He has placed it in a position to collect over $100,000 from customers in areas who were disconnected. The program allowed customers to have their service reconnected if they paid $100 and entered into a payment agreement to settle the balance. One of the dozens of customers who benefited was Michelle Yard. She'd been disconnected for over a year for a bill of over $11,000 owing to a leak. The promotion allowed her to have her water restored. Calling her at a friend by name. Type it up, type it up. Let me get it through, let me get it through. And you should see these two women like if they the first time they saw me, but I tell you the warmth and the compassion that they feel for me. Oh my God, I thank you, Lord, every day that you sending people into my life that showing me that everyone is not the same, that you can lean on you. Customer service representative at the BWA, Tracy Bascom, explained to the CBC team why she went the extra mile for Miss Yard. Michelle came into the Barbados Water Authority and she came to the customer rep, Tamika Newton. Basically, um, I went over to um, Tamika Newton's desk and saw Michelle sitting there. She was very sad and I stayed there and listened to her story, which was very sad indeed. Between me and Tamika Newton, we really tried to get her water back on because of the situation that she was going through. And I'm very thankful that we actually did it. The corporate communications specialist, Joyanne Haig, says although the program is over, customers can still come in and negotiate payments. We had persons who were disconnected for a long period and mainly because of leaks. So we felt that uh, it is Christmas and around this time we would like to be able to give them an opportunity to get back on track, which we did via a payment agreement. The amnesty now is, is over uh, through the promotion. However, we would still encourage customers to come to the Barbados Water Authority and still make an agreement with us. We do have a payment agreement team on board for persons who may be having some difficulty or would have had some big bills due to leaks. There will be no pension payments this month for approximately 600 Clico pensioners. That's according to June Fowler, the president of the Barbados Investors and Policyholders Alliance. She says she was advised today by a representative of Clico's judicial manager, Deloitte, that effective immediately, those traditional policyholders who have been receiving their pensions on a monthly basis will no longer do so. She says she was informed that Clico has run out of cash and that a promised injection of funds has not been forthcoming. This latest blow would appear to confirm that Clico has indeed run out of funds and as claimed by the judicial manager, it has no option but to put the company into liquidation. And this, despite the Minister of Finance's assertion in his press release last December that any attempt to place Clico into national life or its associated companies into liquidation will therefore be premature, unwarranted, and unnecessary. To date, neither the judicial manager nor BIPA have been contacted by the newly appointed directors of the company that the Minister of Finance claimed last December had been set up to coordinate the execution of the restructuring plan. Well, CBC News was able to make contact with an official from Deloitte this afternoon for a response to BIPA's contentions and concerns while a response was promised and follow-up calls were made at different times this afternoon, a response was not forthcoming up until news time. On December the 18th last year, government announced through the GIS that the Ministry of Finance had facilitated the establishment of a new company to initiate and manage government's participation in the restructuring plan for Clico and its associated companies. That company has a board of directors chaired by financial analyst Clenel Goodman. Barbados is getting close to seeing the number of hotel rooms it once had in the sector more than 10 years ago. This is according to Executive Vice President of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, Sue Springer. She says that several hotel projects are coming on stream this year to add to the new Sandals Barbados Resort, which will be opened at the end of the month. A Hyatt International Brand Hotel is planned to be built next to the boatyard, and this will commence in mid-2015. Sam Law's Castle, I'm sure you've all probably forgotten that it even existed, but it does, not in a particularly good state, but it is going to be, um, construction is going to start in August of this year. 
with an investment of $200 million, and that money has come from the Chinese government, and the project will take approximately 18 months to complete. Beaches at Armand Beach Village will commence in November of this year. Settlers Beach Resort, which you may know on the west coast next door to Sandpiper, is now going to be transformed into an amazing luxury villa resort, and construction will commence in the first quarter of this year. Ms. Springer was speaking during an awards ceremony for staff at the Mango Bay Hotel. Several employees were recognized for their hard work and dedication to the hotel. Ms. Springer says the island will benefit this year from an additional 35,000 seats through the introduction of extra flights. And the Mango Bay Group is looking to take over the management of the Sandy Beach Hotel. Chairman of the group, Peter Odell, says they're trying to close that deal soon. We hope to start construction there in the, within the first quarter of this year. And we're aiming to try and have it completed and finished by the end of the year so that we would be in operation for the winter 2015-16. And I say this to say that this will also give us an opportunity. So for those of you who work within the group, I want people who are mangoized and ironized to be the first to, to benefit and when we are going to go to Sandy Bay and to, to, to do the operation there, to give people the opportunity to go up the ladder and take a different role at that hotel. Mr. Odell says one of the highlights of 2014 was the Mango Bay Hotel winning the World Travel Award for Best Boutique Hotel in Barbados. Well, tributes have been coming in for former public servant and well-known contributor to Barbados, Sir Harcourt Lewis. According to reports, Sir Harcourt passed away on Tuesday at the Bayview Hospital after a period of illness. President of the Barbados Association of Retired Persons, Ed Bushell, says Sir Harcourt was very devoted to his work. Sir Harcourt really was a man who was committed to credit unions, as far as I know, and committed to bar. And he served on the committee selfishly for many, um, and was responsible for many of the changes and uh, innovations that we had in the medical scheme. And as a, he was the former chairman of ICBL, and therefore he brought a wealth of knowledge and experience to that position as chairman, and we will really miss him. Former Deputy Prime Minister of Barbados, Sir Philip Graves, spoke of Sir Harcourt's desire to achieve what he wanted. I first remembered him working at the, not for the Hilton, but the Hilton Project. When the Hilton Project first came to Barbados in the 1960s. He was the person, he was the head person for the government service, pulling together all various um, institutions that were working to bring that into re to reality. And he, he did an excellent job of it. And he, he was always, you know, he was always used if you want something done and to be achieved because he never failed. If you want something done, give it to our court. And he would get it done. And that was usually his landmark. We'll have more news right after this break. But first, we'd like to hear from you on this question. Given its success, should the Barbados Water Authority extend its amnesty for defaulters? Text yes or no to the short code 8111. The results at the end of the news. Dear Clark, I've made a fascinating discovery. The Institutional Water Cooler. Its gravitational pull sucks people from their workstations at the busiest times of day to stand around it and chat about emerging global trends like, will pink be in fashion next season? <laughs> Meanwhile, the world slows to a stop as it waits in line to be served. I don't see that trend at Globe Finance. Globe Finance. Think outside the bank. When it comes to their financial service, slow is out. Is in. Now one of the things that we as boys love to see was when the guys were either loading sugar into the barn or out of the barn. The sugar was loaded that it went right up to the roof in tears. And guys would take the sugar from the truck, two guys, 
and they will toss it. And they'll be doing that for the whole day. One of those bags weighed 112 pounds. And these men be tossing the bags up, and then when the ship came for sugar, they be tossing the bags down and loading the spoons. This is the story of Barbados' seaportal, the port of British Town, and it's coming soon to CBC TV8. Exhibitors at this year's AgroFest are being encouraged to set up earlier. The call has come from James Paul, the Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Agricultural Society, which stages the annual event in Queen's Park. Mr. Paul says some school children who go on the first day have been feeling shortchanged since some of the exhibits are not ready when they visit. He made a comment during an AgroFest food vendors workshop at the Dining Club in Christchurch. We are going to do everything possible to ensure, to facilitate your opening at 9 o'clock. What we have had complaints sometimes in the schools for is that when they come in, you are still setting up. We need to avoid that as much as possible this year. And I will be making a special effort to work with the coordinator and the service providers to ensure that you, when they come in, we are ready to show them because we need to get more professional in terms of the show in itself, that if you say we're going to start at a time, we start at that particular time. Well, Mr. Paul said this year there will be partnering with some new entities, including Sandals Resorts Barbados. He also says there will be a record number of livestock exhibitors this time around. Mr. Paul has also reiterated that despite its growth over the years, the event is still best suited to the heart of the city. AgroFest will run from February 27th to March the 1st. Every crisis inevitably comes to an end. This message is one of the Catholic Church. They've been spreading it as it says many people are fearful and are losing hope. Bishop of Bridgetown, Jason Gordon, is telling Barbadians the gospel assures that God is always there and will bring deliverance, not in our time, but his. He says the church has to play a more active role in the society. The Roman Catholic Church intends to play such a role going forward. We will speak when it is necessary on social issues, applying Catholic social teaching to inform our analysis. We will also speak on neutral grounds. We have no interest in partisan politics. Our overriding interest is a better Barbados, which upholds the dignity of the person made in the image and likeness of God. Bishop Francis says that arising out of Synod 2014, the Catholic Church intends to become more service-oriented, moving to build a better church over the next five years. An exciting period of renewal, therefore, lies ahead for our church. As in a survey, 98% of the Synod delegates said they were optimistic that the church will achieve its new vision. Now, that's a resounding success. A special team has been appointed to oversee the implementation of the Synod mandate, and the chair of that team is Ms. Glenda Medford. From time to time, in the life of every individual and organization, it is necessary to pause from the daily hustle and bustle to engage in serious self-examination. The police are tonight seeking your assistance in locating a woman wanted in connection with a serious criminal matter. She is Jamaican national Karen Kelly, a 25-year-old resident of Barker's Road, Haggart Hall. She is of slim build with black hair and dark colored eyes. She has a tattoo of the letters KK on the inner side of her right forearm and she speaks with a Jamaican accent. Karen Kelly is advised to present herself to the police accompanied by an attorney at law. Anyone who may know the whereabouts of Karen Kelly should contact the police emergency at telephone number 211, the nearest police station, or Crime Stoppers at 1-800-TIPS. You're also reminded that it is a serious offense to harbor or assist wanted persons and anyone caught committing that offense can be prosecuted. Still to come, a look at stories making headlines across our region but now a reminder we'd like to hear from you on this question given its success should the barbados water authority extend its amnesty for defaulters 
test yes or no to the short code 8111. Those results are coming up. Follow CBC News on Twitter at CBC underscore Barbados, Facebook CBC News Barbados.